Mike, what's your take on uh, having all of Wednesday games uh, for the rest of the season? You preferred or against it? Or? Uh, I had never done it, so I don't know. I mean, it's new. Uh, seems like everything's new. Times of games, I'd prefer not to play at eight. Makes the day a long day. Plus, the real thing is it hurts our press coverage because you guys just can't get those above the front fold articles in an eight o'clock game. And I don't blame you. I know well, that's you, why. Uh, I know that's why. You know, so if you didn't uh, linger so long in your radio show, we could actually talk. I'm just talking to you guys first now. Oh, okay. You know, pressure. Uh, you know, I it. Uh, the, I don't know what to tell you on that, John, because I've never done it before. Uh, it, it gives you two days. Like normally today, we would be preparing for Washington State. Yeah. And then we'd have two days for Washington, and then we'd come back on the Friday for the uh, – I think the good thing is maybe the weekend games are going to be potentially better uh, because you – I mean, we were tired Saturday, I would guess, coming off. We didn't get much done Friday. Uh, after eight o'clock Thursday night game on the road, so now we've got two days, so there's no excuses there. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see. Now I would guess that if somebody had a Thursday game and we had a Wednesday, and then they had a Thursday and had to play us on Saturday, that would be potentially problematic. Maybe it all works itself out. But and don't, for instance, this week, don't you have a slight advantage for this first game over Washington? They played yesterday, and they have to travel. You were home Sunday morning, and you're home. You yeah, to they were day. probably in bed two hours after we were, though. I mean, we didn't get home till two o'clock in the afternoon, so you know, I, I mean, I don't think there's that much difference. So they were at home on Sunday, so the amount of rest they got was similar. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, if you sprain an ankle or had something happen, it would give you less time to to deal with it, but. It's just, it's going to happen. Everybody's going to have something to say at some point, but hopefully it all balances out. Uh, for example, you know, uh, somebody's not going to play somebody in the four game deal that they're going to say, well, wait a minute, you know, I, pick two schools that you're UCLA. competing Arizona's with. Done with UCLA. Yeah, so if you're talking Arizona, UCLA, if UCLA gets in the hunt or stays in the hunt or whatever, it gets to the end, they're going to want to crack at Arizona and they're not going to have it. So Arizona from that standpoint uh, is in, in uh, pretty good shape having gotten that win. So, but that's just the rub of the draw and that, nothing you can do about that. How's uh, Jabari's ankle? Is he uh... practiced hard today? Yeah, he should be ready to go. Is this the first time he's practiced? Yes. And how did he look? Uh, he didn't look, he didn't limp. I um, mean, you know, it was uh, he he pretty much looked as if he wasn't worried about it. I mean, I think there's probably some rust there. He's missed a lot of practice time and game time. But uh, I anticipate him getting better every day pretty quickly. And will you kind of govern his minutes a little bit? To be yeah, I, we're going to have to wait and see. I mean, he's going to have to earn his way back into this thing. We've won four games, you know, and he's going to have to earn his way back in. We've got a pretty good little chemistry. So, I don't I think there's any question talent wise he, he's a real plus for us but uh, you know Jeff's kind of stepped to the forefront a little bit and he certainly deserves a chance but I, I would expect we would you know start to see where he how he reacts in game time and game intensity because certainly conference games are more intense than, than what he's probably experienced to this point. Uh, doctor's going to reevaluate the wrist I think this week. Uh, he's working on range of motion. He's dribbling a little bit right-handed. He's not really shooting the ball, so he's got to build his strength up. I'd say a week or two. Like you talked about the play of Richard this year. Just overall, it seems like his maturity level has gone up a lot, and he's just playing better in all facets. I think so. I mean, he's he has lapses. I think that probably most everybody does. Uh, to me, they're glaring because he's so capable. But uh, if you wanted a, a guy to go get a rebound for you, I, I think he could go get one in a crucial situation. Uh, he had a little bit of difficulty free throw wise, but bounced back and made some and was very good against Oregon when we needed him. Uh, offensively, he's you know restricted himself a little bit more to the post, and that's where he should be. So, uh, it, he, I mean, he and David are two pretty nice bookends to have in there at the post. Throw shooting, so you guys 26 29 against Oregon, and then 
a little bit of a lapse uh, against Oregon State. Can you, can you attribute that to something or just? No, we, something? we haven't. I, mean, I don't. I think uh, focus, uh, whether you know whether Oregon's better than Oregon State remains to be seen. But they were ranked. Uh, it was the first game of the week. We were ready to go, uh, and concentration plays a lot has a lot to do with that. Reacting to the ball, you get more rebounds. Uh, we obviously were step slow against Oregon State, particularly to start the game. I think that does carry over to free throws, shooting, everything. Was it kind of a, almost predictable that the that Jordan Matthews would, you know, would not follow up the, his big game against Oregon against Oregon? I'd love for him to get 32 every night. <laughs> we wouldn't have him for long, but uh, I mean, I, I don't think, the, the thing with, a guy like Jordan is is making open shots. Now against Oregon, I'm sure that they're upset that he got as many open shots as he got, and he made them. Uh, against uh, Oregon State, he got maybe the same looks, but he didn't make them. And uh, so, like anything else, if you watch tape of some a game, and, and they, we watch all the games, you say, hey, "Don't let him catch it." So you become alerted to that. Well, so I'm sure Oregon State was not going to let Jordan get his, any free looks, and also Jeff got some looks, and it just that's just kind of the way it works. And if you've got five guys that can all shoot it, and they decide to take one or two guys away, then the other three can can have big nights. But uh, I mean, Jordan had one of those just unbelievable games that uh, he'll remember forever, really, uh, where everything was going down for him, and we were getting him getting him the ball and uh, you know he'll he'll have some more, I think, but I wouldn't think that he would have them every night. Obviously, nobody can. You get back to the, the schedule and the whole business, uh, how the tactical schedules change. Next week, when you go to LA, I understand you guys are going to go down and come back and go down again. Yeah. Is, is that to accommodate getting into class a little yes. bit? Or, yes. Yes. I mean, for all that pontificating by universities about class time and stuff. And they do something like this. Does it sort of speak out of both sides of their mouth? Well, now you think I'm going to say that? <laughs> well, I world. mean, <laughs> look, when this this TV deal came up, and uh, the P's and C's, as they call them, were presented with a an X amount of dollars, giving the state of the athletic departments these days, that was a big deal. We're going to give you X amount of dollars. That's however many. So naturally, they were inclined to do that. I asked the question, based on what you said, well, now, how, what are we going to do on Wednesday away games? We can't. We can't be taking these kids out of school. And the, the answer was that we the presidents were promised no missed class time, no more missed class time. So that means you're chartering back Wednesday night after game, which is what we're doing from SC. We're coming back, and that's easy to do from Los Angeles. You can get back, and we're also doing it from Arizona. All right, so that costs money to do that. So that's a concession that was made that we would fly back on a Wednesday so we could be in school Thursday, Friday, and if it was if we could get back down like we can to LA and we're gonna be gonna have to go to Arizona State, we will. We'll go back on Friday night. Uh, so that means we're not missing any additional class. What about the Washington trip? Can't do it. You can't do it. So you and stay there. Yeah, you have to because it takes you so long and I think our game in Seattle on Saturday is like eleven o'clock. So there's no way you can be in class on Friday and play an 11 o'clock game you, in Seattle. You fly out Tuesday after classes? Yes. So that, that's the concession. My suggestion was to get a charter package for everybody in a conference. Everybody charters everywhere. And you go to somebody and say, look, we've got 45 segments of charter for everybody. Let's go. What kind of deal can you give us? But Universities didn't want to do that. They wanted, each school wanted the right to make their own decision with how they use that money. I say take the money out, 
don't give it to anybody. It's, you got a 12 team deal, you can maybe make it. Well, you take it all out before you give it to anybody, so it doesn't come out of an individual budget, so nobody sees it, and you divide it all up, and you get a better deal because you've got all these flights, and you get a carrier, and everybody's on the same equal foot. And I still think that's the fair and the right way to do it based on uh, what is a significant amount of money, which I don't know that we are getting because I don't know that. that Roberts is making all the money they had to initially to anticipate, but that's a whole different deal. Now the conference asked the coaches, hey, what do you think, or did you kind of? No. <laughs> so you made this suggestion. Well, they might ask and not listen, <laughs> but I mean, it's, you mean in terms of Wednesday games and all so that I'm stuff? I'm saying, like, what, 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 in, in what venue was that suggestion made? Was that at an athletic director uh, coach's meeting, you know, yeah. where I'd suggested that, where the commissioner was there, and it wasn't like something they hadn't thought of, but right now the finances are first and foremost. I mean, honest to goodness, just between you know us boys years ago, the the idea of missing class was absolutely out. There was no, but financially, people have gotten themselves in a spot where they're looking at things differently than they used to, uh, and. You know, there. I mean, there is some truth to the fact that you're going to say, "Well, you know, you're not graduating, but, but, oh, by the way, let's take you out of class." I mean, that doesn't work. It bothers you a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it does. It, it, you know. But I also understand that a lot of decisions in athletics now are business decisions, for for lack of a choice. Uh, as far as the actual round ball activity, uh, how good is Washington? Good. Yeah. They. Uh, you know, they, uh, Wilcox is really a good shooter. He's, he's as good a shooter as in the country, I think. So uh, he's got great range, and he's a really quick release, gets his feet set. They, they're actually going with small lineup most of the time and are very active defensively and switching everything and getting up and uh, looked very good defensively. I don't know that you can use the Colorado game as a gauge just based on Dinwiddie going down. That really took the wind out of their sails. Uh, I think Colorado was actually ahead at the time, and then they just fell apart. You know, you've got one guard out, and it was an all-conference player, and the other guard goes over. It puts a lot of – it's pretty tough. Uh, but Washington's pretty good. They have – initially had some issues trying to figure out who what to do and I think Lorenzo's figured out hey this is my best lineup is smaller and uh, he'll come with Desmond Simmons at the four off the bench and he'll come with Kemp at the five uh, and he's pretty much playing Goss is a real good point guard got a great mid-range floater uh, a Andrew Andrews is, can can go off so it's uh, they're pretty good it looks like uh after Wilcox, they have some, some balanced scoring with uh, some other guys. That they, they do. Go I mean, they're not three-point pure shooters like Wilcox is, but their scorers, Andrew, Andrew Andrews, can score. He's streaky, but when he gets going, he can really put up numbers. Goss has been very good on the break. He's an excellent handler. Uh, Anderson, not so much. He's more of a defensive rebounding type guy. Uh, but actually, Paris Back Blackwell from – Transfer from USF is a big body guy, 6'9", 275. Probably not 6'9", quite, but he's big and he gets position and he can score inside. He's a load. For the matchups thing, does it sort of work both ways? That they have some, you're going to have some matchup issues on defense against smaller, quicker guys maybe, but they got to guard you. Uh, I don't know that, uh, that we can't handle the four-man matchup-wise in terms of being smaller and quicker. They've done a real good job of, you know, they know that that's a concern. Anderson's done a really good job of fronting and they protect it very well, but they really switch everything and they switch really he aggressively and quick. He does. Yeah. Uh, he's what, six? Four. Four. Yeah. But at the other end, is it a problem for you to chase him? Um, no, because he's not a guy that's, that, you know, if it was Wilcox and we were trying to chase him with the four, yeah, it would be a problem, but we wouldn't match up that way. Wilcox, you'd like to try somebody like Tarona? Or Absolutely, or Justin. You mentioned, uh, Mike, earlier uh, chemistry, which you uh, have a good little... Uh... Uh, Brant stepping away from the basket, and there's going to be that's going to go on all year long. Brant's pretty good, huh? Brant. Yeah, he's improved. He's gotten stronger. Obviously, he yeah. spent that year with the ACL in the weight room. He's strong now. Before, I didn't think that was what his strength. He's strong. He's, 
He didn't. He doesn't shoot it like he did originally. He was really good shooting the corner. Nifty stuff the it was. He was. Yeah. And, and Dave was a tough matchup for Dave. He obviously just kind of barged him and got to the got to the glass. We got time for two more. Really? Where are we going? <laughs> okay. Um, and this is a casualty of the Sunday, when the Wednesday, Saturday thing. But have you had a chance to look at Washington State at all? Can you any insight into them? Um, you know, no, because. You know, yesterday I looked at Washington knowing we had the two-day Washington prep, so we won't probably look at Washington State till Monday. Now, that's not to say that I don't have a coach doing it. You know, we have a coach that has watched all their games, will have a scouting report. So when we, you know, we don't know what Lacey's situation is going to be, uh, whether he's going to be ready to go or not. Uh, so, but I, I, don't, I don't know specifically. I know they're playing, from what we've seen, they're playing really good defense. They've done a really nice job defensively. Got a couple guys that can score. If Lacey's not available, that's going to hurt them because he's a premier scorer. Uh, but they've got a couple other people. So, but I don't know. I haven't. That that is a result of not having done the Monday, Saturday scout. You mentioned that um, sometimes your guys you think they might play kind of better or harder on the road because they know they have to. Uh, any concerns about coming home and exhaling and just feeling? Like sure. I generally concern myself with everything, uh, but you know the notion that fans, home crowd, are going to help you or score any baskets is not correct. I mean, it might sustain momentum if you can get it, if you get some excitement and get adrenaline off of a crowd. That's one thing. Uh, you know, Oregon State obviously shot the ball very well. It kind of played into our a little bit lack of intensity, but they still had to make those shots, and they did. But sure, that's a concern. I think sometimes on the road, you, you know, we've done a pretty good job over the years of convincing guys that you do whatever you have to, whatever it is on the road, whatever it takes, it's what you do. You don't, any individual things go out the road. Where at home, maybe you're a little more sensitive to people watching you and being aware of that. I think that's human nature. It has to be a really good one, John. Pressure's on. <laughs> After you get uh, information from your assistants, how long does it take you to come up with a game plan for a particular opponent? Well, if you, you depends on the – really depends on the, the quality. I, I know uh, I, can, I can look at, a, at something, if I've seen it enough from the past, and know what it is pretty quickly. So it's not like starting from scratch every time. Uh, so you can look at something and, and, and you can go back in the archives and look how you handled it the year before and the year before that and what's worked and what you feel good about. And what I, what I ask them coaches to do is to put together things that they think will work against the way they play defense that's in our package, how we want to handle certain aspects of what they're trying to do and maybe pick three or four things out that you know, are key. But <laughs> having said that, they'll say play hard, uh, you know, execute, I mean, things that are, you'd say every game. But you, you occasionally come up with things that are critical to what a team needs to do. Uh, and so you, you try to emphasize that in the time that you have. So it doesn't take too long. I mean, it, first day you kind of work your way through it a little bit. Second day you're much better. They know more what you're trying to get them to do and you're much clearer what you're trying to do. That's why the two days is going to be a plus. All right, players are waiting anxiously.